something that's bugged me over the past few videos and may has, have bugged you is that I can take the ship, point it any direction, but if I fly over here to the left, you can see the ship kind of leaves. There's this imaginary line right here. And we have one on both sides here. Let's fly the ship to the right and fly it out. And there's a line right there, like so. And then, if you remember, we did we made that happen about, I don't know, lots of videos ago. I'm going to make the window taller this time. You'll notice we can get to the edge here just fine. But then if I bring the ship back in, let's go up this time. And there's an invisible line right there. Many, many moons ago, many videos ago, we wrote this code here where we did this viewport. And a viewport is kind of like a window to the world. If you look at your window of your office or your room that you're in, that is a viewport to whatever is outside. You can't see the entire scenery outside your building, but you can see out the viewport, sometimes called a camera. All right, well you can see a... Anyway, long story short, we set up our camera to say, hey, you know what, let's take the minimum width and the height. We want a square viewport, because without a square viewport, we saw in previous videos that our ship kind of looked a little wonky, because it would stretch and that sort of thing, and you can't see it. Now we fixed that problem, but the way we fix that is by taking the minimum width and the height, and then we just said, well... Whatever the the minimum of the width of the height is, that's going to be our, our viewport width, and we'll just use that, all right? making a square viewport, and we've centered the viewport in the middle of the screen. So that's nice and dandy, but it's actually starting to bug me now. I want not a square viewport. I want a viewport that takes up the whole screen, and I want my ship to maintain its triangular shape. All right, let's actually, let's, let's actually delete all this code we wrote and just say, hey, GL viewport, we want you to be at the zero, zero, the upper left-hand corner of the screen, and take up the entire width of the window, and the height, height of the window, like so. And you'll see the problem we had before manifest itself very quickly. You notice we have a fat ship here. If I rotate the ship, that doesn't feel natural at all. All right, but we have the advantage that we can go to the edge of the screen. All right, and let's, oh, come back, ship. All right, we'll go. Go to this edge of the screen, you can see, hey, that's fine and dandy, but we do not have this natural looking looking ship anymore. In fact, I can even uh, exaggerate the effect. Let me drag this out and drag this out. I'm going to make it very wide and very short. And then notice that triangle, a nice fat triangle. It doesn't look uh, perfect units like we had before. Let me rotate here, and that should feel even more awkward almost looks 3D-ish. Right, let me explain what's going on here. All right, in our OpenGL, which I know we haven't covered too much OpenGL, but we've done some basics. We rendered some vertices, we drew our triangle, and uh, and then we said, hey, viewport, take up the whole window. Well, notice this window is wider than it is taller. Okay, that's called aspect ratio. Aspect ratio is, let me get white here, aspect ratio is the ratio of the viewing area's width divided by its height. All right, right now we our width, our width is greater. This is our width here. Our width is greater than our height, making the W greater than the height. So our aspect ratio is larger than one. Okay, if we if our aspect ratio is one, then we know our width is identical to our height. Right? Now, if our aspect ratio is less than 1, we know that the height was greater than the width. This term dominated this term. So what we're, what we're seeing here is some aspect ratio. And if you remember the OpenGL coordinate system, I explained this in previous videos. If it helps to go back and watch those videos, you may. But this is 1 in the y and negative 1 in the y. And this is negative 1 in the x and 1 in the x. So to go halfway from here to over here, I have to step this far to roughly right about there. But to go halfway from here to up here, I have to go this far, right? Not the same distance. But that's just how OpenGL works. It has this negative one to one, negative one range in our, in our viewport. And so when we put our triangle in the screen, it stretches. Okay, it stretched our triangle because the length on the width is longer than our length on the height. So hopefully that makes sense. I can really exaggerate it. Let me 
just pull that way over there. Notice the ship in the middle is getting very fat, very wide. Let me drag this up, okay, and, and let me rotate. That just feels so unnatural. So what we need to do is uh, write some code to compensate for that. If, if the window, if the game, the OpenGL window, stretches our ship, then we certainly want to uh, de-stretch the ship, or do the reverse of what the OpenGL window is going to do. We want to compress the width of our ship so that when the OpenGL window stretches the ship, then we'll, it'll, our compression will make up for the stretch that OpenGL does. In fact, I also want to point out something else. Let me, sh let me squish this window one more time. It always stretches in terms of the actual end image. Remember we do this rotate code and now I have this triangle rotated and notice the stretch is on the end image there. It's not stretching our ship this way. Our ship's kinda pointed this way right now. It's not stretching like this. It's stretching the end result. It's always stretching on the X as I widen and uh, shorten that that window. So we can stretch Stretch, stretch. So last, what we want to do, we want to rotate like normal. We want to translate like normal. But the very last thing we want to do is a scale. It's called scaling, where we 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 basically are going to compress this shape in words to make up for this huge uh, difference between the width and the height. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. We need to write a scale function for our matrix to do just that. We need to test it, and then we need to apply it to the ship. So here we go.